The fifth week of fall season is here, and this week we'll take you to Colby for tennis action, Smith Center for volleyball, and even a great bend as they battle Garden City on the soccer field in a highly anticipated WAC conference matchup. We have much more coming up, including tonight's football action, and it is all coming up on tonight's The Scoreboard Show. <laughs> Presentation of Scoreboard Show, Smoky Hills Public Television is brought to you in part by an underwriting grant from... From Rural Telephone and Next Tech, providing the region with telephone, internet, cable television, and wireless phone solutions, Rural Telephone and Next Tech proudly support public broadcasting and all ventures dedicated to improving Kansas communities. Dove Chevrolet, Buick Cadillac. Providing sales, service, and genuine GM parts to the Golden Belt since 1957. Located at 4217 West 10th, right next to Brahms in Great Bend. Come see us. Welcome to the Scoreboard Show. I'm your host, Troy Waymaster. Regionals are quickly approaching in several sports, and tonight's football action had several district games being played. Let's get tonight's show started off by looking at some of the scores coming in from tonight's football action. If you do not see your score, give us a call with it at 1-800-337-4788, extension 141, and we'll get it on the air for you. If you want to take another look at the scores, they're available on our website, scoreboardshow.tv. Also on the website, you can find out what KCAC Game of the Week is this week, and also previous Scoreboard Show episodes with extra clips. Now let's not wait another second and head out to the highlights from this past week. The scoreboard show traveled to Colby on Tuesday for the Lady Eagles tennis tournament held on the courts at Fike Park at Colby Community College. Norton took home first place honors in number one and number two singles. Leading the way was former state champion Tawny Griffey, who went undefeated on the day. Other number one singles competitors included Dripping and Greeley County's Megan Redding, who took second, 
Erica Aiken of Phillipsburg finished in third place. Haley Wallingford of Colby was fourth. Entry goes Tabitha Wolf took fifth. Number one doubles were won by the team of Michaela Billetta and Monica Bailey of Greeley County. In second place was Phillipsburg's Brooke Boyington and Caitlin Vogel. Norton's Rickley Green and Ashley Hildebrand was third. Kaylin Rice and Holly Wilcoxon took fourth. Team totals had Norton scoring 22 points for first. One behind was Phillipsburg with 21. Third place was Tribune Greeley County. Russell took fourth. Colby finished fifth, followed by Scott City and Trigo, who tied for sixth. Dodge City Red Demons at TMP Monarchs. This was a high scoring game, a really high scoring game, so we're just going to show you some of the best goals. Here's Dodge City's Rene Yeverino. Now it's Johan Vidana's turn. How about Red Demon Isaac Palma? And another one by Palma. Johan Vidana gets another one in. And here's Jonas Gotti with his contribution to the scoreboard. The Dodge didn't have a flawless victory. Here's TMP's Lane Fisher. Hey, a goal's a goal. And Monarch Carlos Duenas. In the end, though, Dodge took the game with a whopping 10 goals to TMP's two. Now we head out to Great Bend as they hosted Garden City. Garden City came out early to get the lead as Diego Benitez got a free kick, and he finds the back of the goal only 12-29 into the contest. Garden City would go on to take a few more shots on goal. However, then Emilio Castillo brought it downfield. Great Bend's goalie steps up to make the save, but Castillo sends it soaring into the goal for Garden City to go up two to nothing. Great Bend would take their own shots on goal, but it would not be enough. Garden City would continue with the lead into the half. They would go back and forth. Great Bend shot on goal. Garden City shot on goal. However, with 12:43 left to play, Great Bend's Ivan Galindo takes the shot and gets it to light up their half of the scoreboard. This seemed to light up a fire in Great Bend's eyes as they took several more shots. However, they would not be able to make it into the goal, and Garden City goes on to get the win 2-1, advancing their WAC conference record to 3-1. Well, Garden City's next matchup in the WAC would be Dodge City, as they hosted the Red Demons on Thursday. In the first half, Emilio Castillo brings it downfield, off to David Amaro, header, Joel Sanchez headed to reverse directions to leave the Red Demons guessing and the Buffaloes with a goal. Dodge City takes their shot at the goal, but it is saved by Garden City. The Red Demons would try again, but they just couldn't figure it out in the first half. Second half corner kick header, David Amaro helps increase the lead to two for the Garden City Buffaloes. Here we go again as Garden City brings it down, kick is off and saved by Red Demon goalie. Dodge City sees their chances open up and they break away downfield. Isaac Palma with some footwork, shot saved by Garden City. However, coming off a penalty in the box, Hector Navarro gets his kickoff, it's deflected. Navarro just puts his foot back out and the ball goes in for an exciting goal. Garden City comes answering back as David Fuentes puts it in for another Buffalo goal. Dodge City would have a few more opportunities to come back, but they would be unsuccessful. Garden City gets the win three to one. Okay, soccer fans, now it's time for a classic matchup. Solana Central versus Solana South. Seven goals total, but not evenly distributed. Here's Central's Barkley Edison with the header. Central one, South zero. And Tanner Montoy, boom, Central two, South zero. Here comes Damian Cooper in. Central three, South zero. Now an opportunity for South as Jose Escobedo takes the penalty kick. Goal, Central three, South one. But here's Central's Damian Cooper again, pow. And Jesse Lennon, boom. Here's Damian Cooper for his hat trick. The game and all the glory of crushing your crosstown rival, six to one. The Smith Center Lady Red Volleyball team hosted a quad wrangler on Tuesday. We will start with the match between the Plainville Lady Cardinals versus the Lady Ringnecks of Hill City. The first set was close with the score being tied more than once. Hill City uses their height advantage and pulls ahead for the 25-21 win. In the second set, Hill City 
who were recently ranked third in Class 2A, gets the match 25-16. Next up are the Lady Tigers of Stockton taking on the Lady Red of Smith Center. In the first set, Smith Center takes control and maintains a lead for a 25-14 win. Stockton gets more aggressive to start the second set and takes the early lead 11-7. Smith Center fights back to get the score in their favor and goes on to the win 25-20. Now it's time for Stockton versus Hill City. The first set is very even with neither team able to pull ahead. The Lady Ringnecks finally get to close the win, 28 to 26. The second set was just about the same evenly matched play with several ties. Hill City wins the match with a 25-19 score. The host Miss Center now takes on Plainville and takes the match in straight sets, 25-14 and 25-12. The Lady Cardinals then must face Stockton. The Lady Tigers take charge and win easily in two sets, 25 to 10 and 25 to 13. Now it's time for the match featuring the two unbeaten teams on the day, Hill City and Smith Center. In the first set, the Lady Red jump out with an early lead with the score tied at 14. Hill City starts to pull ahead and goes on to win 25-21. The Lady Red stays close in the second set and gets a score in their favor. They go on to force a third and deciding set by winning 25 to 16. In the third set, Smith Center has an early lead, but Hill City comes back to tie the score at 11. After a timeout, the Lady Red make their own comeback to tie it up at 17 points. The Lady Ringnecks push for a lead and go on to win the set and the match with a 25-20 final score. Coach Patrick Younger of Nest City starts his first race of the Nest City Cross Country Invitational on Thursday. The Junior Varsity boys and girls were the first to take on the course together and then split off to their own routes. Finishing in first place for the girls was Taylor Burns of Central Plains with a time of 20.43. Cheyenne Schwab of Palco was second. Leading the race for the boys race was Alexis Chavez of Scott City with a time of 21.09. Boys men's Kyle Crawford took third for the girls. Scott City's Cole Allen was next for the boys, followed by Corey Clark of Ellis for the girls. Tribune Greeley County had the next finishers who sprinted to the finish line, Casey Randolph and A.J. Gover. Now for the girls' varsity. 36 runners finished the race, and Koryama Yanez of Tribune Greeley County took first with a time of 16.42. Nest City's Jesse Rebottom was second at 16.56. Leslie Van Lonen of Hill City took third at 17.06. Team scores had Nest City taking first, Scott City in second, and Hill City took third. It's time for the boys' varsity. 42 runners started the race, and the top runners stayed together for much of the course until Nest City's Dre Carson pulls ahead for the lead and takes home first place honors with a time of 1721. Next was Troy Weiniger of Tribune Greeley County at 1726. Scott City's Joey Meyer took third at 1742. Wyatt Beckman of Nest City was fourth. Dublaine Wohler of Victoria was fifth. Tribune Greeley County's Martin Valletta finished in sixth place. Total team scores had Scott City taking first, Tribune Greeley County in second, Victoria was third, Hill City fourth, and Ingalls was fifth. Well, that brings us to Friday night, and it's time for football action. Casey will be in after this short break to take us out to the football action from tonight. Don't go away. Presentation of Scoreboard Show at Smoky Hills Public Television is brought to you in part by an underwriting grant from Cardinal T-Shirts, providing direct-to-garment printing with no design or setup fees. No minimums required. Also offering embroidery services for hats, shirts, and jackets. Cardinal T-Shirts, located at 821 North Main Street, Hoisington, inside Cardinal Pharmacy. Exhibit Customs does cars and trucks, wheels, tires, truck accessories, audio, video, subs and amps. It's not just the products they offer, it's the service behind the products. Get it tough, get it loud, get it mean, get it downright bad. Exhibit Customs, you're an individual, prove it. It's Friday, it's football, it's fall, and the temperature outside is almost as cool as you folks at home watching the scoreboard show. Hey everyone, I'm Casey McAvoy, and we have some great highlights from the Red Hot Nest City Eagles and Otis Bison Cougars to Ellis, Russell, Hill City, Victoria, and Cimarron right after this.
Football action on Scoreboard Show is brought to you in part by Simpson Farm Enterprises of Ransom, Hayes, Great Bend, and Beloit, your local spray coop and Apache dealer. The Learned Indians, winless in 2010 and 11, are now sitting at 3 and 1 as they take on the Cimarron Blue Jeans, also 3 and 1. And it's reverse, reverse, reverse. Christian Fisher down the far sideline. Seth Packner now, he'll give to Ty Clark, and he'll keep on running down the far sideline. Number 20 is not going to catch him. Touchdown on a 40 plus yard run. Here we have Easton Palmer, he'll give to Brady Keith. Initially tackled here by A.J. Cooper and a few other Jays on the assist. Palmer play action. Throwback, Brady Keith coming near sideline. And Isaac Stanley on the tackle. A.J. Cooper to Ty Clark. Up the gut, Blue Jay touchdown. Give to Keith far side. Number eight, Josh Mice. Good run, one, two. And Palmer up the middle, touchdown, Indians. They'll fall short, 19 to 20. Eric Ramirez boots it. Number 15, Seth Packner takes the traffic head on, gives it a good go. Jacob Horton with a good stick on special teams. Southeast of Celine at Russell. Keenan Breen, quick feet out at the 50. David Crawford knocks him out of bounds. Green looks more like Colin Klein following his blockers into first and goal territory. Outside, says Breen, and he's in. Touchdown, Trojans. Russell football, number 23. Gets a little face mask there. Did the NFL replacement officials call this game or what? Chase Prester goes far side and picks up a Bronco first down. Ben Stutterheim on the tackle. Alex Baldwin, Chase Prester, and Southeast of Celine is chasing him. First and goal, Russell. And we go over the top to Eric Rohr. Touchdown, Broncos. Norton Community at Ellis. Blake Hudson up the middle. Cole Renner brings him down. Jared Roll has the ball, right? Scratch that, number 13, Dalton Miller has the ball and a Blue Jay first and goal. And Miller keeps the old pig skin and pushes it right in for a Norton touchdown. Gage Younger for Ellis to receive. And he's going right, he's going left. Coming near side, and Kobe Undersetter on the tackle. Jacob Brooks taking it far sideline, far down the field, and far away from any railer defender. Touchdown, Norton. And it's great to see high schoolers kick field goals. Andrew Ellis holds, Austin Hager kicks, and it's good. Sylvan Lucas at Victoria, and don't forget to show your love wherever we go so we can put you on the scoreboard show, especially if you make a sign that says, we love you, Casey, on the scoreboard show. Just kidding. Otley on the carry, past the goal line, touchdown, Knights. Colin Harold on the carry, up the middle, Noah Drowling on the tackle. Harold in deep shotgun. He finds Kevin Lopez, and Brian Dome brings him down. Rogan Neller, the 180 pound running back down the far sideline. Harold on fourth down. You want to keep it? Good run. And we go back to Naylor on the carry. And Clayton Roth on the tackle. And we go reverse. Lopez tiptoe through the dadgum tulips and touchdown Mustangs. Homecoming royalty in Hill City, your king Gus Nicholson and his queen Shelby Stewart, along with little ones Ryan Cooper and Dalton Stephen. Excuse me, Dayton Stephen. Dylan T. Meyer, Rollins County, Capo for a short game. Same play on offense, only not defended the same as Capo breaks into the secondary. Toss left to Capo, the 5'10", 173-pound junior. 
has glory written all over this down. Touchdown Buffaloes. Hill City, Derek McBeaver with the keeper and first down. T. Meyer says, I'm a keeper too, only he's going the distance. He's going for speed. Another Buffalo touchdown. All the way. Another McBeer keeper. Miser on the tackle. And in the season of the quarterback draws, T. Meyer here gets another score for the RCA Buffaloes. And the one and three Dighton Hornets visit your number four ranked eight man division two Otis Bison Cougars. Ryan Kuhlman pass and the run. Great block from his receiver to make it into the end zone. Cole Urban, Dylan Wisman, Cougar touchdown. And Nicholas Higgison boots it, left legged even. Ryan Kuhlman returns, and the Hornets with their great blocking scheme get Kuhlman in the end zone again, but Otis Bison takes this one 50 to 34. In district action, your number one K prep rank, Nest City Eagles visit the two and two Quinter Bulldogs. Number 88, Will Frusher on the nice catch and run at the end of the play. Colton Ratliff finds Frusher again, and he'll go all the way this time. Touchdown, Nest City. Tyler Wagner gives to number 11. Colton Kerwin, the 180 pound, six foot junior, gets a couple yards. Ratliff will keep it, run far and hit hard. Kerwin on the tackle. Garrett Flax, stiff arm, near side, nearly has a tight rope touchdown. Kerwin just stops him short. Ratliff keeping, and Ratliff scoring. Wagner, pass, tip drill. Number 58, Blake McVicker gets the interception on a great defensive play by the senior from Nest City. Ratliff scrambles right, and this is why you practice tipping the ball and trying to catch it. Zach Mater gets the pick. Smoky Hills Public Television Scoreboard Show and the KCAC have teamed up together for the game of the week. This week's Game of the Week is University of St. Mary at Sterling College. The Game of the Week kicks off at 6 p.m. on Saturday, and you can catch the action on our website, scoreboardshow.tv. And now, here's another look at scores from around the area. Thanks for watching.
presentation of Scoreboard Show on Smoky Hills Public Television is brought to you in part by an underwriting grant from... From Rural Telephone and Next Tech, providing the region with telephone, internet, cable television, and wireless phone solutions, Rural Telephone and Next Tech proudly support public broadcasting and all ventures dedicated to improving Kansas communities. Dove Chevrolet Buick Cadillac. Providing sales, service, and genuine GM parts to the Golden Belt since 1957. Located at 4217 West 10th, right next to Brahms in Great Bend. Come see us. Well, that wraps up week five, and we are now gearing up for week six. As we try to figure out where we're going to be Saturday for volleyball action, you can find out by following us on Twitter. And if you want to take another look at anything you have seen on tonight's show, you can see it on our website, scoreboardshow.tv. Until next week, we remind you to put on your game face, make up a sign, or just do anything to get the attentions of our cameras. And next time, we just might see you on the Scoreboard Show. For myself, Casey McAvoy, producer Michael Quaid, and everyone at Smoke Hills Public Television, have a good night. <laughs>